Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to our brand new series covering the Paradox Game Engine. Uh, if you are completely unaware of what Paradox is, uh, check out GameFromScratch.com. Uh, there's a closer look at Paradox, or in the YouTube channel, a uh, video of the same title. It uh, gives you a good overview of what Paradox is all about. Uh, in fact, if you watch that video, it's going to probably make the first video or two of this series somewhat redundant for you. Granted, these are going to be 5 to 10 minutes in length. It's going to be... I think it's about 50 minutes in length. Uh, so you can save time definitely here. Uh, what we're going to look at today specifically is installing Paradox. It's going to be a very short chapter because, frankly, uh, it's quite simple to install. Uh, but you got to start somewhere, and installation made as much sense as anywhere. Uh, one thing I said in the past uh, when I was going to do this series is Paradox is under active development. Uh, so that means things are going to break and change a lot. So my goal is to try to keep each one of these little tutorial um, videos or text versions uh, quite simple and concise. That way if something breaks, I can only replace a small piece at a time. Uh, so anyways, welcome to uh, Paradox Game Engine. Uh, here we are. If you want to get it going, it's at uh, paradox3d.net. Now, one thing to be aware of, however, is Paradox does not require, specifically require, Visual Studio to be installed. Uh, but Essentially, it does. Um, it installs the MS Build tools, so you can work with uh, complete text editors and do all your compilation from Paradox if you wish. Uh, however, it works best with Visual Studio. Also, part of the install is going to install a plugin into Visual Studio. Um, so if you are going to be working with Visual Studio, what you want to make sure you do is install Visual Studio first. Now, the nice thing is, as of about a year ago, Microsoft made Visual Studio completely free. Uh... I'm going to go with 2015 right now. 2015 version works. Uh, it's, it was just released, uh, as the time I read this video, it was released about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so if you want stable, uh, go with the 2013 version. However, I have been using the 2015 version. It works just fine. Uh, so you can get it at uh, visualstudio.com. And then what you ultimately going to want to download is Visual Studio Community, unless, of course, you have a license, that is. Visual Studio Code is a much different thing. It's a straight-out text editor. It's not what you want here. It's a good program, but it's not what we want. Uh, so you just going to go ahead and download the community-free version. Now, I have it installed. That's a... Don't, don't think that was the end of the download. It's about 10 gigs, 15 gigs in size, depending on how many options you pick. Uh, but that's the installer. Go ahead and run it and I'll install Visual Studio. I already have Visual Studio installed and the process takes about an hour so I don't really want to go through that again. Uh, but just want you to be aware you should install Visual Studio first if you're going to use it. Uh, Visual Studio is available completely free if you want to go that route. Um, again you don't have to but a lot of the functionality from Paradox is going to be best paired to a good IDE. Uh, so I highly recommend it anyways. Uh, one thing I guess I should make clear at this point in time, if it isn't already obvious, uh, Paradox is a, is a Windows-only product. Um, so you are not going to be able to develop on Mac or Linux or anything else. Uh, you need to have a version of Windows installed. I'm not sure specifically which versions. Uh, XP would be the cutoff. I'm not sure if XP is supported or not, to be honest. Um, so anyways, once you've gone ahead and installed Visual Studio, all you need to do is go over to the Paradox um, website at paradox3d.net, uh, head over to the download section, and hit download. So, pretty simple so far. Uh, this is a small file. Again, this is a, a bit of an installer. Paradox is not large at all, so I'll just let this run in real time. And there. So now the setup is installed. Go ahead and run that. And click Next. Accept the license. Whatever. Whatever. I hate things cluttering my desktop, as you may be able to tell. Uh, but... Uh, start menu is fine, and install. Okay, so it is now installed. The Paradox Launcher is installed, and this is where you will start um, your Paradox journey, I guess we could say. So just come on in here. It's going to say there are no versions, and it's going to go ahead and download the most recent version of Paradox. Uh, you can download all versions if you wish uh, using these icons here. Uh, and yes, you want to go ahead and do the plug, assuming you have Visual Studio. So just let both of these things happen. Like I said, this install process is really easy. Um, so we'll just let it run. Uh, if you've used uh, Unreal Engine or etc., it's it's kind of like their Unreal Launcher, uh, but much, much, much smaller in size because uh, our download is already done. Uh, as new versions are uh, released, etc., you can grab them this way. Uh, so it's just finishing off the install. And downloading the Visual Studio plugin. Now this might create a bit of an issue because I've actually already installed the Visual Studio plugin, but it should be smart enough to handle that. 
All right, uh, done. Okay, so there we go. We've got, uh, okay, I'm not going to install this because I already have it installed. Um, but in your case, you just go ahead and click this button. It'll install the plugins for Visual Studio. There we go. Um, now, right here is your start button. And realistically, you're done. You've just created your, um, you have an install now of Paradox. You're ready to go. Um, here's where you click to actually start um, the version up. And give it a second. Uh, so, there. Uh, you can go ahead and create an example, etc., and it will launch you into Paradox. We'll just make a simple one. Here's the Hello World sample. And pick the platforms you want to run on. And welcome to Paradox. Now in the next video, I'll actually do a quick walkthrough of what's in the Paradox UI. I actually already did this in the Closer Look At video, uh, so if you already watched that, skip the next video, because I'm just going to be basically giving you a guided tour of the Paradox Studio itself. Um, the only other thing to be aware of here um, is if you are running Optimus, you want to make sure that the Paradox EXE is running on uh, your GPU. Although, to be honest, it's not that uh, GPU intensive, so this runs just fine on the uh, Intel HD 4600 I have installed, uh, but that might be about the last step you want to do. Uh, finally, let's just head over to Visual Studio, and we're just going to make sure that the plugin's installed properly. Now, as I said earlier, you don't have to. You, MS Build is installed as part of the installer. I wasn't aware of that. They actually let me know, uh, but MS Build is Microsoft's build system behind the scenes, and the C Sharp compiler is actually already part of uh, the .NET install, so you don't need Visual Studio installed, and when you want to just run your code, uh, you can go ahead and just run it right here. So you can add and edit using whatever text editor you wish. You don't need to use full Visual Studio. However, you're going to lose debugging, um, refactoring, uh, telesense, and all the other neat things that um, make Visual Studio useful. Uh, but if you look up, if your Paradox install is correct, you will have a new menu called Paradox. It's only got these two, uh, these two uh, methods in it. Not, not a lot going on. But that verifies that you do, in fact, have a proper install of Paradox. And truthfully, that's about it. That was installing Paradox. Like I said, I want to keep these things short and simple. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the next part. See you later. Bye.